Um, my name is Vicky Marie and welcome to this 50 to 60 minute live Zoom class. I hope it finds you healthy and well. We're going to be starting our class in your seated position. So however that may look, please come to your seated position and we will start soon. So just beginning to arrive in your seated position. And this evening, we're going to begin to just take a few shoulder rolls. So when you are ready, just bring the shoulders up towards the ears and rolling the shoulders back. Hands can be on the knees or just quite loose in the lap. And if you've been going backwards with your shoulder rolls, the invitation of coming up and forward. Just noticing any areas of stickiness or hesitation. And then we'll begin to settle in to our stillness. Maybe softening the eyes or closing them all together. And for this evening's breathing invitation, we're going to take that ball of light, visualizing a ball of light, any color, any size, just below the navel. And we'll be using our breath on our inhale, visualizing that ball of light traveling up to the collarbone, pausing, and then on the exhale, traveling down. If you'd like to take this evening's breathing invitation, taking a full round of breath as you begin to visualize your ball of light, any size, any color. And then on your next inhale, begin visualizing the ball of light traveling up. Pausing. And then slowly traveling all the way back down. Two more rounds of breath through the nose. And then gently releasing the visualization, keeping the depth of breath. begin to gently come into a forward fold so hands sliding towards the shins or your lap and then walking them forward you may gently stay up on the fingertips maybe the palms forearms and dropping the head down and if there's any pressure staying on the fingertips or the palms you can take the back of the hands to the lap and just gently tuck the chin down towards the chest. Inhaling, lifting the gaze, lifting the torso, coming back up to your seated. 
We're going to begin to inhale the arms up overhead. We're taking a YMCA. Huge beach ball between the palms. Fingers energetically going away from the knuckles, away from the wrists. And as we hold this massive beach ball overhead, we're going to slowly just tilt over towards the right. So try to keep that distance between the palms the same. Probably feeling some heat in the shoulders already. And then coming back to center, we're going to slowly come over to the left. And back to center. We're going to take a gentle twist, taking that left hand to the right shin, right hand coming near the hip. So you may stay right here. This might be enough for you. Or you're going to begin to let that left hand travel to the thigh, right hand further behind. Just taking the twist however you'd like to this evening. Gazing over towards the right or maybe over that right shoulder. Listening carefully, keeping that hand on the shin, or if it's on the knee, you might bring it closer to the hip. And we're going to begin to take this right hand up. Again, this left hand can travel up the leg. You might even take it to the space between the hip and the rib cage, feeling the breath. If we do that, we're opening up our gaze. Gently inhaling, releasing the hands back up overhead. Taking that big beach ball. We're going to gently tilt over towards the left, keeping the distance. Seeing we keep that right sit bone in contact with the earth. And back to center. Slowly going over towards the right. And back to center, coming into your twist, right hand coming to that left shin, left hand near the hip, or again, traveling along that leg, taking a deeper twist. We're going to begin to come into that side stretch. So letting that left hand go up towards the ceiling. Right hand may travel towards the hip or maybe that space between the ribs and the hip. It might just be a finger or two that fits into that space. And the whole hand. Inhaling, arms going wide. We're going to come to a gentle forward fold. So again, fingertips coming down in front, maybe walking them further forward, coming into your forward fold. Always an invitation of taking the back of the hands to the earth, palms up towards the ceiling, changing rotation within the shoulders. And taking the palms back down to the earth, inhaling, lifting the body up. We're going to very slowly begin to take our legs apart. Maybe not width, maybe slightly wider. Knees are bent. And our hands are going to come behind us. But again, you always have that opportunity of doing gorilla hands, fingertips, or just keeping the hands on the shins entirely up to you. We're going to begin to windshield wiper, taking a gentle twist. We're going to go to that left side first, letting that right knee drop down. And then beginning to come back up and taking it over to the other side, being mindful of those hips. I'll do each side one more time, taking the knees over towards the left. Center 
and then over to the right. And back to center. We're going to be coming into a deer pose. If you've ever done it in my happy hour, or you might have done it on Wednesday, actually. We're going to begin to let the knees gravitate over towards the left. So our torso is coming up. So we're seated. And imagine the knees are about 90 degrees or less. So the feet might be coming in towards the body for 90 degrees. And again, everyone's body will be different. This may be enough for your deer pose. That or you're going to begin to tilt forward, pouring over that left foot, shin, or knee. So it's similar to a pigeon, except for this back leg. It's called a deer. You might be on the fingertips, palm, or maybe the forearms. Or you may be able to melt down, similar to your pigeon pose. Wherever you are, just ensuring your, those shoulders aren't coming up towards the ears, they're coming away. And the shoulders roll down the back. And if this is your first time doing deer and it feels awkward, you're doing it right. <laughs> With the support of our hands, we're beginning to lift our torso up. We're going to take our hands behind us just for support as we bring our soles of the feet. So we might need to make adjustments, taking the feet back to that as wide as the mat or even wider. And we're going to begin to take our deer on the other side. So beginning to let the knees gravitate over towards the right as we let the torso come up. You might be right here. Or you're going to begin to fold over towards that right foot. Again, with support of your hands, if you like. Shin or maybe knee. And just folding down. Inhaling, lifting the torso with the support of our hands. Gracefully taking the hands behind us as we take the soles of the feet back to the earth. And we're just going to gently winch the leg of the knee side to side. So again, you're going at your own pace, taking any variations. You might stay in a more of a B sit. And when we're ready, we're going to begin to bring the soles of the feet together, coming into a butterfly pose. So very slowly, coming into your butterfly. So we're going to be taking a twist within our butterfly, so just ensuring your happy diamond or triangle shape with the legs. And when you're ready, we're going to take our right hand to the left ankle, left hand to the hip. And we're just beginning to get that twist that leverage. You can stay here or again, that right hand might travel to the top of the knee as the left hand goes further behind. As you twist, ensure you're not losing the breath. You're not holding the breath. We're not gritting the teeth. Inhaling gently, releasing the twist, coming into a fold over your butterfly. Bowing the head down, visualizing the spine coming between the shoulder blades. Inhaling, lifting the torso. We're going to take that twist on the other side. So again, left hand to the right ankle. You can take the back of the hand there. Right hand near the hip. Or maybe the top of the leg. As always, you can take a bind if that's in your practice, taking that hand to the hip. And 
gently releasing our twist, coming back into that fold over our butterfly legs. This time you might take the elbows onto the thighs, maybe the knees or the shins, just to help open up the legs as you fold. Again, shoulders coming away from the ears. Inhaling, lifting the torso, lifting the gaze. We're going to come into eagle arms. We're going to keep our butterfly legs if it's comfortable. If not, you're going to come into your easy seated position. Otherwise, we're going to begin to T-shape out our arms, concentrating, and taking our left arm on top, giving yourself a hug. So hands might be on the upper arms, shoulders or shoulder blades, elbows are coming up. You can stay here, begin building your eagle arms, cupping the elbows, back of the hands, or maybe taking a bow. We're going to take two breaths with your eagle arms. So as we're inhaling, we're setting the elbows up, gaze might follow. Exhaling, elbows coming in towards the heart space, rounding the spine. Inhaling, taking the hand, elbows up. Exhaling, coming down. As we inhale, we're taking the elbows up and detangling our eagle arms, T-shaping the arms out. Right arms coming on top, giving yourself a hug, your version. Staying here or coming into your Eagle arms, cupping elbows, back of the hands, and that second bind. Taking your time on the second side. And again, we're going to take two breaths, but we're going to take our exhale first. So as you exhale, elbows coming in, rounding the spine. Inhaling the arms up. Exhaling. And inhaling, elbows going out towards the ceiling. Remember, in my cues, maybe faster, slower, or your pace. This time, detangling. If we're in our butterfly legs, bring the hands underneath the thighs, soles of the feet to the earth, and then we're beginning to straighten our legs in front of us. Feet are hip width apart, you might take them slightly wider. Keeping the heels in contact with the earth, crown of the head's going up towards the ceiling. And then slowly slide forward, taking your time. Hands can glide along the leg. And you might begin to grab behind the knees, maybe the ankles, maybe the feet. Wherever you are, we're going for length and then dropping rather than rounding down. Three rounds of breath here. Inhaling, lifting the torso. We're going to be coming into a mer pose, mermaid or mer man. <laughs> So the support of the hands, you're going to begin to bend the knees as you bring the heels towards the right sit bones. So imagine you're sitting on the floor wanting to be a mermaid, merman, mer pose. So your heels might be quite close to the body, or they might be quite far out. We're going to take our hands over towards the left. So that right hand might be on the thigh, or you might have both hands in contact with the earth. Again, that twisting motion. You're looking over towards the left or over the shoulder. Being mindful of that left side of the lower back. Now, this is an amazing pose to keep in your toolbox, particularly if you do lots of sitting during the day. Okay. 
Okay, we're gonna to begin to bring the gaze forward with support of the hands behind us, taking the legs out in front. And then we're gonna to begin to take this on the other side. So hands coming over to the right, heels coming to the left. Again, knees can be stacked or staggered. Right hand on that left, sorry, left hand on that right knee or to the earth, taking your gaze over to the right. When we're ready, we're gonna be coming into a kneeling position. So taking the gaze forward, hands coming forward for support as we bring the heels underneath us, coming into a kneeling position. <laughs> if you're still with me, well done. We're gonna take some thunderbolt breaths. I'm gonna to turn to the side so you can see me better. So it's gonna be Yogi's choice, you can stay on the tops of the feet. If you want to take it another level, you can come forward and tucking the toes. So you're sitting, stretching the arches of the feet or the balls of the feet. Now when you're ready, you're going to take the hands down to the side. Inhaling, we're taking the arms up overhead. Again, you can be on the tops of the feet or the toes are tucked. Fingertips are going up towards the ceiling. Now imagine you have more of a box than a beach ball overhead. And then as we exhale, belly button to the spine as we slowly let the hands come back down. Full permission if you want to change your feet. If you, in particular, tucking the toes, you can. We're going to go for two more times. Inhaling, we're coming up. Stretching the fingers away. Exhaling, slowly letting the sit bones come back down onto the heels. Last time, inhaling up. Exhaling, slowly coming down. We're going to come into a gentle child's pose, taking the hands down, untucking the toes if we tucked them, and coming into your child's pose. That could be knees or hip width apart or a wide knee child's pose. Hands in front, making a pillow. You can take the hands towards the calf or the heels, giving your shoulders a break. Two more rounds of breath in your child's pose. You can just take any organic movement by staying the course, or you can connect to your partners. Now here we're going to be coming into a Sphinx pose. So when you're ready, you might take the hands back in front if you took small childs. And we're going to begin to make our way into Sphinx. You might come into a table and then begin to slide forward, just depending on how much room you have. And then beginning to release the front of the body down. So in our Sphinx pose, we're aiming for the shoulders to be over the elbows, or the elbows further forward, not like cobra. We don't want them near our rib cage. Tops of the feet in contact with the earth. Now your hands might be parallel or you might take them into a prayer. Again, depending on what's best to help keep the chest open. We should be feeling a stretch in that upper lower back. Now, as always, it's Yogi's choice. You can keep the tops of the feet hip width apart. You can begin to let the big toes come towards each other, making more of a V-shape with the feet, or letting the ankles come together. Just see how those different modifications feel on the back. So we're here for five rounds of breath. So with every inhale, we're pressing into the forearms, pressing into the elbows. 
finger pads in contact with the earth unless you're in prayer. One more round of breath. Then we're going to begin to come into a, making a pillow with our hands. So when you're ready, letting the elbow go out to the side and the other elbow. You might make a fist or stacking the palms on top of each other. But just making a pillow for the forehead. Enough facial, enough space for facial features. You might need to walk the elbows farther apart. And when you're ready, we're going to begin to lift one leg and then bending the other knee. Soles of the feet might be going up towards the ceiling or pointing your toes. Just really gently bring to both of the knees side to side. I may mention wiping the feet, but you may not. We're going to begin to let the feet come to stillness and then slowly releasing one foot and then the other. We're going to begin to come back into that Sphinx pose. So when you're ready, beginning to deconstruct your pillow, making your Sphinx arms. And you might find that the body has moved either south or north, depending on when we are windshield wiping our legs. So you might need to make some adjustments. And again, taking your choices with the feet. When we're ready, we're going to begin to make that pillow again, letting the forehead come down onto the hands. And this time we're going to be coming into crocodile. So you might be happy entirely right here. Or we're going to begin to take this right knee, right leg out towards the side, maybe as wide as your mat, maybe slightly wider. We're going to begin to come on the inside of the foot. So we're bringing the inside of the right foot to the earth. This might be enough for you to see if you're bringing the inside of the leg out wider than your mat. You can stay here, you can begin to send that left foot out as wide as your mat, coming onto the inside of the ankle. It feels really awkward. You can maybe bend the knees. We're just coming onto the inside of the feet. Using the support of the floor. When you are ready, we're going to begin to bring that right top of the right foot back to the earth, onto the mat, and then the same with the left. Bringing back to original foot position with your hip width apart. And we're going to begin to bend the knees and windshield wiper the feet. Lovely, letting the feet come to stillness and then slowly releasing them back down to the earth. We're coming to our Sphinx pose for one final time. So beginning to bring the elbows underneath the shoulders. Or maybe this time you might tent up the fingertips so you might spread the fingers. No use to it. In keeping with the theme of the back bends and back strengthening, we're going to be exploring locus. And I want you to take this next series at your own pace and your own sweet spot. When you find your edge, staying there and choosing to come out whenever you'd 
light. One more round of breath in our Sphinx. And then we're going to begin to make a pillow with our hands. Uh, we're going towards the long edges of your mat. We're just going to take a breath here. And then what we're going to begin to do is you're going to begin to point the toes away. We're lifting the feet by pointing the toes away. And that might just be still on the shin. Maybe the knees come away from the earth. And you're actively pointing the toes away, lifting the legs. And gently releasing the feet back down to the earth. We're going to begin to take our hands back. So we're deconstructing our pillow. Palms down. Fingertips going towards the feet. We're tucking the chin in towards the chest. And this time we're going to send the fingertips towards the back of the room, lifting the chest. Just imagining that cobra-like action of lifting or peeling the chest away. A bit of superhero. Letting the breath move the body. I'm going to just rock between the two. So you're going to begin to release the palms down, tucking the chin in, forehead to the earth, and then begin pointing the toes, lifting the legs. Releasing the feet down as they make contact, begin pointing the fingers, peeling the chest. Exhaling, releasing the palms, tucking the chin in, forehead, begin pointing the toes. Releasing the tops of the feet. And we're going to begin to point the fingers, lifting the chest. You can stay here or you can begin to point the toes at the same time. Coming into locus. Again, if you come to your edge. And then we'll all begin to release the tops of the feet and the palms. I'm going to invite you to come on to your right ear or temple. And just resting. This will help with the neck, only if it's comfortable. Beginning to take the gaze back to the earth. We're going to come into our locus again. So again, pointing the fingers, maybe the toes go simultaneously. If it's in your practice, you might choose to take the fingertips or the palms together and taking a bind. If you're taking a bind, gently releasing. We're releasing the palms and the tops of the feet. And this time coming, that invitation to coming onto the left ear, left temple. And bring the gaze back to the earth. We're going to be coming into a small child's pose. So slowly and casually bring the hands underneath the shoulders. In your own time, Slowly peeling the chest, coming onto your knees, tabletop. And then making your way to your child's pose. You can take that wide knee child's pose. Making more room for the chest. And you might come onto your forearms first. And then making a pillow. And then you might set the fourth come down. We are here for about 10 rounds of breath. So if you need to take any organic movement, or if you want to change the hands or the legs, please do.
one more round of breath. And when we're ready, we're going to begin to press ourselves up. So we're into that kneeling position. And bring the knees back. And just taking a round of breath here. Then the shoulders come away from the ears. We are going to be making our way onto our backs and we're going to be coming in through a boat series. However, if there's anything you need to change in your environment, please do that now. Otherwise, we'll begin to come into our boat-like pose. So I'm going to invite you to bring the feet out in front of you. And again, we'll make our own way here. We need to change anything in our environment. So your feet are going to be hip width apart. And make sure the feet are towards the front end of your mat, so giving you space to come back. Nice to begin to make your V shape. So hands might be behind the thighs just to help catch ourselves. And you can stay right here. If you want to take your boat a little bit further, you might lift the heels. Or you might begin to lift one foot, maybe the other. Or for the new practice, you can straighten both legs. I'm still working on that one. Hands can stay behind the thighs wherever you're at, or you can take them out to the side. You're just holding, breathing, making sure you're not gritting the teeth. If we've lifted the feet, we're going to slowly release them back down. I want to give ourselves a hug. So hands coming behind the thighs or over the shins, tucking the chin in towards the chest, inviting the forehead towards the knees. Inhaling, releasing the hug, coming back into that foundational boat state and making your choices, lifting the heels, lifting the feet, Maybe taking the hands out. If you do take the hands out, I invite you to send those fingers energetically away. We're here for two. Now this time we're going to be coming onto our backs. So if you're in your foundational pose, you may choose to roll back. If we have our feet up and our hands up, you might again, belly button to spine, begin to roll back, bring the knees in with you. If you're short on space, you may just naturally come onto your back in your own way. Once we've released our boats, knees are in towards the chest. And just taking a moment here, making sure the back of the head's comfortable, shoulder blades and sit bones. And then we're just going to begin massaging out. So you might rock side to side. You might make little head cup like circles or dinner plate circles. And then we're going to come to stillness. We're going to begin to take the knees and the ankles apart. I'm going to make two circles. Coming into a variation of butterfly. 
So when you're ready, you're going to begin to let the knees and ankles come back together. And you're going to let the knees come apart. Hands are going to come onto the shins or the knees. So the hands might be in an awkward position. Or you can begin to take your hands down the shins towards the ankles or maybe the feet. And then gently beginning to let the soles of the feet come together. So it's not your traditional recline to where the butterfly legs are in contact with the earth. But we're trying to have the soles of the feet, elbow, sorry, knees going in opposite directions as we bring the feet closer. You may choose to stay here, but you might come into a happy baby, taking the feet apart. You might even grab on to the back of the thighs, calves, or the feet. And just coming into your happy baby. Again, rocking or extending one leg and then the other. Just ensuring the back of the head stays in contact with the earth. And then when you're ready, slowly releasing the feet back down to the earth, semi-supine. And we'll gently invite that left knee in towards the chest, grabbing behind the thigh or the shin. Right leg can stay bent. You might straighten that right leg if you've got space. And take a gentle twist. So if you have space, you can teach about that left arm palm down or cactus the arm. Right hand coming to that left knee. Staying here or taking that knee across the body. If that right leg is straight, you're coming onto the outside of the ankle. With that right foot, just letting the leg roll over if you've got space. Gaze in towards the ceiling or over that left shoulder. Taking a full spinal length. When you're ready, bring the gaze and the knee back to center. Bring the left knee in towards the chest and then the armpit. And we're going to slowly release that left foot down. And then we're going to begin to invite that right knee in towards the chest. Again, taking your choice of grasp behind the thigh or the shin. Left leg can stay bent, or again, you might extend the leg. You're going to take your twist, and taking your choice for that right arm, if you have space, left hand on that right knee, staying here, or crossing over the body. Adding a gentle pressure on that right thigh, and then choosing your gaze. Exhaling, bring the gaze and the knee back to center. Bring the knee in towards the chest and then the armpit, so it's going more in a diagonal. And then we're going to gently come into our full body stretch. If you have space, taking the arms overhead or the hands to the shoulders and then stretching the legs away.
come into our last pose of banana. So I'm just going to really take that left heel towards the left corner of your mat if you have one. Right foot's going to follow the same direction. You're going over towards the left. It might come alongside or you might cross that right ankle over the left. Staying here, we're taking that left hand towards the top left corner. Right hand coming alongside. Maybe grabbing a fingertip or a finger. And just coming into your banana shape. Letting the gaze come towards that left armpit as the eyes are open. Foot's comfortable in the neck. And then when you're ready, releasing your banana shape, taking a full body stretch. And then begin taking that onto the opposite side. So right heel coming to the, towards the bottom right corner, left foot coming alongside or crossing the ankle, right hand towards the right top corner. Exhaling, releasing, taking your full body stretch. We have finally and successfully made it to our relaxation. So from this full body stretch, that invitation of taking any organic movement, that might be bringing the knees in towards the chest, massaging up the lower back, happy baby, or any other pose you may be craving. We're just taking a few moments here And then when you're ready, coming into a pose that you can hold for relaxation, that might be semi-supine, knees bent, maybe reclined butterfly, maybe traditional Shavasana corpse pose, or any other posture that you would like to take. We're going to be here for 10 rounds of breath. If you'd like to stay here longer, you can do. When you're ready, beginning to bring your awareness back to your breath. And when you're ready in your own time and in your own way, making our way back to our easy seated position. Again, no rush, no hurry. Making your own way back to your seated position in your time. And when you're ready, we'll take one round of breath together, arms going up. And slowly coming down into the heart space. And slowly bowing the head to the hands. In gratitude for investing in your well-being and in your practice. And generally amazing days. Thank you very much for sharing this practice with me. If you'd like to check out any of my other classes, or any of my other videos, please check all the details in the description. Otherwise, have an amazing evening or day, and I'll see you again soon.